Imagine that I have a function that takes two string slices as inputs. It will compare the two lengths of the string slices and it will return the string slice with the longer length. However, this code will not compile. The reason is missing lifetime specifier. So in this video, I'll explain what lifetime is. In Rust, all references have a lifetime. Lifetime tells the Rust compiler how long the references are valid for. In this example, we're returning a reference. This reference either points to the variable x or y. However, what happens if either the reference to x or y becomes invalid after we return this reference? Then this reference might point to an invalid place in memory. For example, inside the main function, there are two strings. And then we call the function longest stir, passing in the reference to x and the reference to y. The reference to x will be valid until the end of the main function. However, the reference to y is only valid inside these curly braces. Outside of these curly braces, reference to y is invalid. Since the function longest stir returns a reference to the longest string slice, what happens if we capture this output outside of these curly braces? Assign the output of the longest stir to a variable called z. Since x is a string of length 1 and y is a string of length 2, here the function longest stir will return a reference to y. However, since y is dropped at the end of these curly braces, variable z will hold reference to y, which is invalid. So trying to use z outside of these curly braces is invalid. This is what can go wrong with our current implementation of the function longest stir. It returns a reference, and this reference may become invalid. To fix this, we need to tell the Rust compiler that as long as we use this reference that is being returned, both the reference to x and y will be valid. To tell this to the Rust compiler, we annotate these references with a lifetime. To do this, we first put a bracket, followed by a tick, and then followed by a name. Here I'll use a. And then we need to put this tick a on the references. Tick a over here, tick a after y, and finally tick a over here as well. This tells Rust that all of these variables will have the same lifetime. The reference that is being returned here will be valid as long as both the reference to x and y are valid. Now that we specify the lifetime for our function longest stir, let's go back to the main function. The code does not compile here since the reference that is being returned, which is z, lives longer than the reference to y. y is dropped inside these curly braces. However, z is assigned outside of this curly braces. There are several ways to fix this. One way is to move this declaration of y to outside of the curly braces. And now both the reference to x and y are valid for the duration that z holds onto one of these references. Another way to fix this code is to move the declaration of z inside the curly braces. That z equals. And then move any code that uses z inside the curly braces. Although y is dropped at the end of the curly braces, the code still compiles because the references to both x and y are valid while z is being used. z is only used inside these curly braces. Inside these curly braces, both the reference to x and y are valid. So that is lifetime in Rust. All references in Rust have a lifetime. It tells the Rust compiler the minimum time and the duration that the reference will be valid for. And it's used to ensure that references remain valid while the code is being executed. 